ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم اني اعوذ بك من شر نفسي So we were discussing the hadith of the 11 women and if you remember the 11 women the first one was the one who talks about going to the mountain and how hard it was for her to go to the mountain and get the meat and so now i would like because these you can say 11 women uh, that complained about their husbands gives us about 11 factors to discuss regarding husband wife relationships and the first part of this hadith discussed basically the aspect of communication the difference between communication between men and women or the difficulty of communication this woman was having with her husband and it was like she had to climb a mountain to get, just be able to have some level of communication So the lesson today will be on and I don't know maybe next time and also because there's a lot of material and this is one of those issues that is so significant because it is one of those things that the whole world and inshallah if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows I will show you what <coughs> Uh, it shows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what people have, have been saying and uh, what uh, is being uh, researched now. This is one of those things about husband and wife, male and female communication. These are one of those things that the, uh, the world is really opening up to basically Qur'an without realizing it. And you know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, سَنُرِيهِمْ We will show who? We will show them. آيَاتِنَا Our signs. فِي الْآفَاقِ In the horizons. وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ And in themselves. And this is one of those where the signs of Allah are in themselves. Meaning within ourselves. And so, even though Allah will show them the signs, but who will recognize the ayat? is going to be the Muslims. They recognize this as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, the husband-wife communication is a very important subject, not only because it's mentioned in this hadith, but also their Quranic verses regarding this. And also because in our community, there are more and more husband-wife issues. And, uh, and a lot of the problems are happening. In fact, today I read a statistic, very interesting one. It said that in America, 20% of the divorces are happening because of Facebook right now. Okay? That uh, the wife has a Facebook, and there she has friends that are women, and she also has friends that are men, and the husbands are not okay with that, and they're getting divorced. 20%. So, anyway, so, that, so we also have these similar issues in our own uh, community. They are just hidden. Uh, under 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 the, uh, the community they're just hidden from us but they're happening all over the time all the time all the time today i want to explore the first part of that hadith by the way that hadith that we mentioned uh, about the 11 women the one thing that i definitely want to clarify in the video uh, for the sisters is that it shouldn't be that Uh, some sister says, oh, this, my problem has this problem, my husband has this problem, oh, he's number one or number two. Of course, that, is, uh, that may be true or may not be true. But the issue is really because it's not a generalization. We have to understand that the Prophet was talking about situations where something had become a habit. Right? Where something had become a habit. So if, uh, if the husband did something once, it doesn't mean now it's a generalization on him. So that should be clear. That there should be no generalization. But having said that, let us now understand male and female communication. And like I said, there's a lot of research done on this. And you'll see, because when you understand linguistics, and you understand communication, you understand human nature, 
And when you understand human nature, all the other aspects of why people are assigned this role, or why people are assigned that role, or why this group of people is given this role, and why this group of people is given this role, all those things will become clear just by understanding the way people talk. So, uh, I want to <clears throat> share with you the following. And what you see is that at each age, the girls face each other, having a kind of direct gaze. So when girls, little girls, we're talking about little boys and girls, because when do they learn language? When is it most natural? It's not socialized, it's not affected by external factors. When little girls are playing at the age of 5, 10, and 15, okay? When they sit, they always sit, what facing? Each other. Each other. When little boys sit, they don't face each other. They sit side by side and in angles. Why? This, because this childhood behavior has a big impact as you get into your adult life. And the thing is, is that uh, the Prophet ﷺ was actually very sensitive to these issues. You know, he was very sensitive to these issues. But even though, you know, we have the concept within Islam of the halaqa, of the, the halaqa, where everyone is facing everyone. So this is something taught in Islam. And I don't want to go into that uh, right now, but the halaqa is definitely a better uh, way of interacting with one another because everyone is facing everyone, right? Uh, like in America, what happens if you're in the back of the classroom and the teacher is in the front, you can just choose not to uh, participate in the class. And so when you're sitting in a circle, everyone is forced to engage with the others. Anyhow, coming back to this issue, uh, so when girls, little girls naturally sit, they sit facing what? Each other, okay? Boys when they sit, and what you see with boys, okay, uh, the 5, 10, and 15, is that they sit at angles or parallel, and they look around the room rather than directly at, at each other. What does this tell you? Girls grow up feeling a sense of, we need to be connected. This is why, when the Prophet put people in halaqa, you are trying to what make what? Connections. Guys, they need to create a sense of, like, don't come into my turf. Right? If you don't come into my turf, I won't come into your turf. But guys do it in a special way. They communicate in a special way, which will become clear. Then, number two. Girls tend to socialize in pairs. And a common theme, how do girls form best friends? What is a girl's or the feminine understanding from childhood of who is my friend? It is when girls tell each other secrets. It's from what? She, when girls share secrets. And what is happening in this hadith of the 11 women? They're what? Sharing, Sharing secrets. Okay, so just keep this in mind. Uh, is the voice going down? Hi, so, can I have the password? Yeah. Almost dead. So girls like sharing all conversations and secrets as they grow up. You probably remember your sister or, you know, the girls, they like talking to each other, sharing all the secrets. Guys become friends by doing everything together. Let's go here, let's go here, let's do this, let's do this. They don't necessarily need to share everything, but they have the need to what? Do everything together. Let's, I'm going to do this with my best friends. <coughs> if in a girl's world... If her friend, who's her best friend, who tells her all the secrets, she comes to know one day that that girl didn't tell me this particular secret, she will be very offended. Even women today, even when they grow up and they find out, oh, my sister never told me about this. So they take that as a very big offense. Whereas for guys, we don't expect each other to tell everything to each other. Right? 
So girls will take great offense on, or women will take great offense that, why didn't she tell me all, all her secrets? Or because she always tells me all her secrets. So why didn't she tell me her secrets for this? So this is a very common thing. Now you'll see how this plays into the marriage. We're, we're going to work our way up. Huh? That is called Hiba. Well, well, if there... It can be Hiba, yes. So then the other thing is, when, when men and women communicate with each other, the following things take place. Very often, walking away from the same conversation. So you're having a conversation, a guy walks away from the same conversation, or a girl walks away from the conversation. A husband walks away from the conversation. What that means in the wife's mind, or if the wife walks away from the conversation, what that means in the husband's mind. Very often, walking away from the same conversation, men and women will have very different interpretations. And often it's because women are focusing on the question of connection. For example, women will think, is this, uh, is this way of speaking bringing us closer or putting us farther apart? So if a guy walks away from a conversation from his wife, the wife will interpret it that as, interpret that as meaning what? He's, he's not, we're not coming together, but we're what? Going apart. And maybe the guy doesn't want to have the conversation because he knows it's going to lead to more conflict. But the way she's reading it is we're going farther apart. And in the same way, very often men are coming to the same conversation, looking at it, at it from a different perspective. And they're saying, is this conversation one of us going, is this putting me up or down? This is a very important point. Girls look at things as connection. Is it getting closer or what? Farther. Guys look in terms of up or down. Guys look in terms of what? Is having this conversation going to put me down? I don't want to have the conversation. You know, are you having this conversation to make a point against me? I don't want to have this conversation. Right? So if you're willing to talk to me equal or above, I can have this conversation. So guys look up and down, girls look coming together and going farther apart. So a lot of times husband and wife, when they don't understand these natural things that are innate differences between husband and wife, what will happen is they'll misread and misunderstand, and then a problem becomes a bigger problem and a bigger problem. In the same way, So in the same way, because guys look in, in what in a hierarchy, up and down, okay? So this is very important for the male psyche, also to feel that he's a su successful husband. Uh, have you ever heard of the, uh, the, the point that sometimes they make in Western culture? They say that uh, men never ask for directions. You ever heard of this? Okay. The, the point is not that they don't ask for directions. The point is that men feel they will, be, they will be put down one step. One step they'll be put down if they do ask for directions. That's the real essence behind it. So, <clears throat> so now this. What about the, inj the injunction women are so frequently told, don't apologize? This is, happens in the workplace. Women are told a lot, don't apologize. Because women tend to say sorry, or I apologize, or I'm sorry seven or eight times more than men. And the reason is, when a guy says sorry, he, feel, he says sorry because he feels he's offended someone, and he says sorry. When a girl says sorry, it's because she feels something bad has happened to that person, and I'm sorry that something bad has happened to you. So in expressing the fact that I'm sorry something bad has happened to you, she says, I'm sorry, right? Whereas a guy will only say sorry if, I, if the man has done something negative to someone, then he'll say, I'm sorry. But girls will say sorry for anything that goes wrong, for anything that hurts anyone, because they're, it's more related to their feelings. So, this is another uh, thing. So, when a girl will say, for example, I'm sorry to her husband, many times, the husband will read, read it as, okay, now I have one up, and she's sorry, so she's admitting that she made a mistake. But in fact, she's not admitting any mistake. All she's doing is saying, I'm sorry that you're going through this difficulty or that you are saying this. Okay, so this is another uh, point.
So the other one that's very interesting that we haven't talked about at all, because these previous ones we've talked about to some degree. So here's a scenario I'm going to paint for you. A man, a husband and wife are driving home. She asks her husband, are you thirsty? Would you like to stop for a drink? He says, no. Later it turns out she was annoyed because she wanted to stop. This is called the indirectness, uh, the indirect way of women talking. Now, for a guy, the way it works is, I'll give you another scenario. So, so then what happens? He complains. Why do you play games with me? If you meant to say, if you wanted water, just tell me you need to stop for water and we'll stop for water. Why do you play games? Why don't you just tell me what you wanted, that you wanted to stop? She complains, you never do what I wanted anyway. Never, remember, the hadith of the Prophet. You never do what I wanted anyway. So we always do what you, you always do what you want. She feels that she showed interest in his preference by asking her a question, whereas he showed he didn't care what she preferred by saying no. See, when she asks a question, she's actually trying to negotiate. She's actually trying to negotiate. When a guy negotiates, the guy negotiates by starting by giving the answer. Like if he said, like generally, if he said no, but she said, then she says, well, I have to go to the bathroom. Then the guy would what? Negotiate from the no to somewhere in the middle. Whereas the guys negotiate from the inside out. Girls negotiate from the outside in. What she wanted was for him to say, well, would you like to stop? You know. She wants him to ask the question back in that way. So, uh, I suspect, the, 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 this is a researcher, her name is Tannen, she's saying this. I suspect that when she asked, would you like to stop for a drink, she probably didn't expect a yes-no answer. Because she's a girl. She didn't expect a direct answer. She probably expected something like, I don't know, how do you feel about it? Okay, and then she could say, I don't know, how do you feel about it? So women are, you know, somebody, uh, some article I was reading today on, on women, men, women, communication. You know, there's been a famous book written called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. But the more you study, the person said it doesn't look like they're from different planets. It looks like they're from different universes. You know, they're so different, it's like they're from different universes. Now here's the important point. He assumes that a decision is made by starting specific and negotiating out. He begins by saying no, but if she isn't happy with that decision, she will say so, and they will eventually arrive at a conclusion that satisfies both. So for him, the direct answer no was a starting point of negotiation, but for her it meant the end of negotiation, the end of conversation. So in that hadith where the woman is saying, you know, I'm going on top of the mountain to reach the meat, to have this communicate, to have some connection with my husband, it goes both ways, right? So one thing is, uh, we, we, men and women have, this is what this subject is called gender intelligence. Gender intelligence is the subject of knowing how women communicate, how men communicate, how they're different. And so if you know how women communicate, if men know how women communicate, men know, if they know each other, how they communicate differently, then what will happen is that uh, things will be a little bit more easy. So for example, in the ayah of the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tulabun, for example, Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara, save yourselves in your family from the hellfire. And then after that Allah says, wa in ta'afu wa tasfahu. You know, if you, no, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, innama al-amwalukum wa awladukum, Right? Indeed, your, your, your family and your children, they're your enemies. But they're your enemies after all of these issues. Right? You know what I'm trying to say? You have to overcome all of these issues to make sure that these are not the issues that are coming in you trying to communicate Islam to them and, and them to us. So, uh, so just the kind of answer he's giving her, yes, no answer, is the kind of answer he wants from her. But it's not the kind of answer she wants from him. And so it's not the kind of answer she's giving him. 
He's wonder he wonders why she doesn't tell him what she wants. She feels like he doesn't care. So that leads to her thinking he doesn't care. It is not the case when women... Okay, so this is another thing. Now, women are always indirect. No, women are not always indirect. Um, women are often indirect when they're getting others to do things for them. And women are often indirect when they're getting their husbands to do things for them. And so now you wonder, okay, so now this is what research shows. Women are indirect when they want others to do what? Even they have done these gender studies, especially for the workplace. I mean, they've done it for relationships, but they've also done it for the workplace. Like how a woman boss, a female boss, is different from a male boss. A male boss will say, go pick up the, the, the stuff. A girl will say, can you please pick up the stuff for me? So the guys will think many times, well, I don't have to do it. It's not that important, right? But that's her way of getting him to do something, is by asking indirectly, can you please do this? And so he thinks, well, you know. And he may also think that she is really dependent upon him, when is, that's just her way of communicating. She doesn't care. She can fire him the next day if she wants. Women are often indirect when getting other men to do things, others to do things for them, even women with women. Uh, men are more indirect in other contexts, such as admitting fault, apologizing, talking about having been hurt, and so on and so forth. So guys are more uh, indirect in those conversations. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we talked about uh, hierarchy. Guys like have one up or one down. They think of things as up and down. Girls think as things coming closer or farther apart. Then we talked about uh, direct versus indirect conversation. Now we'll be talking about how men and women are different in public and private conversations. So, here's, a, here's an example. A wife asks her husband, how was your day? He, see, he gives a minimal reply. He gives the most minimal reply. Reply. By the way, who talks more, men or women? No, men talk more in the outside world. Women talk more in the inside world. In their private life, in the private life, they talk more. In the outside world, women are very cautious to say anything because they don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Guys are actually more cautious in the inside world because they don't want to say something to create a conflict with their wife. But they're very uh, open to talk in the public world. So here's an example of that. A wife asks her husband, how was your day? Receives a minimal reply. She presses, didn't anything happen? So he says, nothing much, you know. So she presses him, didn't anything happen? He says, the same old rat race, the same old thing, everything that happens. Later on, they go out to dinner with friends. And what he tells, in, now they're with friends, and you know, for women, it's the connection, it's the one-on-one, -on -one. it's facing one another, right? Like when they were children. So now, that's the special moment. Now, now when he's in public, and he's now telling one story, uh, work, at work, this very important thing happened today, and this very important thing happened today, and she's thinking, oh, he didn't tell me this, in our private conversation, and how is he telling those things that are not a part of our, that were, he didn't tell me in my private conversation he's talking about in public. So she feels like, oh, he doesn't care about me. Okay? So she's dismayed. Hearing the story as a member of a large audience makes her feel that she's not special. It is a violation of their closeness. But when they, are alo when they were alone, he didn't feel the need to amuse her with the same story. That's private speaking. He didn't even recall the story until he felt the responsibility, or until he was in that larger, what, group. Okay? So, uh, why? Because men, women feel they have to be cautious of their communication in public sphere. And so the only time where they can openly talk without feeling like it's work is when they're in their private sector. 
Whereas guys feel it's guys feel like when they're in the public sector, they have to communicate, they have to talk. It's work for them to talk. And for women, it is work not to hurt anyone's feelings. Don't go overboard. Don't be overbearing. Don't be too aggressive. You know, all these things that they have in their mind. Don't, uh, don't say anything to hurt anyone's feelings. So when they come home, they feel like they can be themselves. A guy feels like when he's at work or in the public space, this is my work. This is what I have to do to, 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 to win. You know, he's looking in hierarchy. This is what I have to do to get one up. So when he comes home, he wants to relax. Because now she feels she's free to talk. He feels, I just can't, my, his, his talking is his, kind of like, uh, is what he does in the, he just wants to relax at home. So, so what happens? <clears throat> uh, at the end of the day, uh, from her point of view, a lot of women, she feels, really, she, she feels, she feels as a female, a lot of women, she feels, she really has to watch it when she says, when she's out in the world, because if you say the wrong thing, you could hurt someone's feelings. You could spark a conflict. People can think you're too aggressive if you talk too much, but at home you're completely comfortable with the person you feel close to, so you're free to talk. The guy thinks, I've had to use language all day there and out there, so make sure that I get the respect I deserve. To, get, to make sure I get the respect I deserve. To make sure people take me seriously. To show what I know, to argue with what I have. Now I'm home with somebody I'm completely comfortable with. I don't have to prove her anything. I'm free not to talk. And so just the thing that she wants to, to do, uh, to do uh, what she wants is she wants the closeness by the... You're following what I'm saying? Okay? So he feels now he doesn't have to prove himself to anyone. He can be himself at home. She feels, and that, therefore he doesn't have to talk. She feels now she doesn't have to prove herself to anybody. Therefore now she can talk. So, and especially when we're looking at the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where the Prophet is climbing up the mountain and doing communication, which type of communication do women like the most? So one is, they want to be communicated to. So this is what men should know, that wives, they would like you to talk to them in their private sphere, one-on-one -on -one time, maybe go out on a walk and have a conversation together every day, something of that nature. Or the, or the wife has to understand that he's been working all day, talking to people all day, talking to people he deals with all day, and now he wants to just have a relaxed time. I mean, think of it, right? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, marriage kind of like really, really a testing ground where you kind of like need, both have the opposite needs, and they both have to work it out somehow. And so, uh, the type of talk that women like to have, again, is the type of talk guys don't like talking about. And that is the uh, telling troubles. Talking about troubles. You know, women, this is why women also like soap operas, uh, and TV and soap operas, and, or, because, Women like to talk about troubles, and to be able to, to hear about troubles for women means like, what? When they were children, they were what? How did they establish friendships? By sharing secrets. Right? Little girls, she's my best friend, I tell her everything. Oh, you're not our friend, we're not going to tell you our secret. I'm sure you've all heard your little girls say things like this. So, uh, so now, when she's older, and her husband, the type of conversation she wants to have with her husband, Particularly is the conversation of troubles in the family. Well, my son is doing this, or you know, our son is doing this, our daughter is doing this, and and sometimes the wife is more worried than the husband because of this, or he, she will cause the husband to get worried uh, also because of this. Uh, knowing other women's secrets and troubles enhances she feels her closeness and also a sense of status, because it's a privilege to share secrets. It's a privilege. So, so women, as I was saying, this, they, women have this amongst themselves. Because your best friend is somebody you tell things to, if you tell another woman your troubles, and 
That creates your friendship. In fact, if you find out that your friend had a problem in her life that she didn't tell you about it, you feel that's clipping the wings of the friendship. That's how women generally are. And I'm not saying this. This is not some Mualmi Saab saying this. This is the best research on gender linguistics talking talks uh, from the research called He Said, She Said, Done. This is like, this is as good as it gets. And this is what they're saying. Tannen then explains, and by the way, one thing about particularly her research, her first book uh, and her second book, what was very interesting is when her book came out, it was so powerful and so much paradigm changing about their understanding of women that they decided to translate that same book in other languages and see if women from other cultures also felt there's something true to this book. And what they found, they translated it in like 35 different languages. They had women read it in all, all these different countries. And what they found was, is that her research was as true in the American context as it was in the other, other languages. And the reason that's important is because that proves again that there's something called fitrah. You know, human, human disposition. Remember, I also talked about this subject in a different way when we were doing the body of the language of the Prophet that human natures have the same way, their body language is relatively the same. So, uh, Tannen then explains that because men typically don't use trouble talk as connection ritual, they think they're being asked to ask, they're being, they, men think women are telling them their troubles to, for, but women are telling them their troubles because that's their way of communicating. But a man when he hears, oh, or this happened or that happened, men immediately start giving solutions. Okay, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Because men don't generally think you can connect with someone telling them your problems. And so men will immediately start offering solutions. And so that then turns a lot of the wives off. Uh, another example amongst women, by the way, I've had women tell me that a problem, for example, two women share problems, and then somehow one of them doesn't have the problem anymore. The friend can actually feel, uh, you know, that now their friendship has come to an end because they don't share a common problem. One woman told me that when, when women are friends, they don't let you be different. If she tells me she has a problem, and I say that's not a problem for me, it says, you're putting me, you're not my friend. Basically, you can't connect with me. And this is why women are very choosy in who they make their friends. You know, this is one of the reasons the Prophet ﷺ probably had to have many wives. Because, like, one man can somehow get along with everyone. But women are very choosy who they allow into their private circles. Right? Oh, I don't like her because of some reason, whatever. And because why? Women don't realize this. How do they choose their friends? They choose their friends based upon their inkling of who they feel they share things with. Then they'll make them their friends. And if they feel that there, there's, no, there's nothing to share with, it's very hard for them to. Guys don't become friends because I share a common problem or I feel like I share a common problem with you. We can get along fine with that. And so now you begin to understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts women in the household situation. Why men are in the outside situation. It now all, like I said, language helps understand the nature of things. And once you understand the nature of things, you understand how everything comes together. Uh, so it's not that women don't care about being one of, or they don't care about uh, their friendships. It's, it's, it's that they have not focused uh, sometimes can present a challenge to women which is you have a problem you better have a problem to tell me that's how women function in their sharing of problems now you may notice this between why women want to talk to their family members why they want to keep talking to their mother because a lot of it has to do with hearing the problems of the family Right? Why women insist on talking to their sisters or still stay connected with their, their friends back home even though, because why? Because generally what they're doing, 
उसका क्या हाल है क्या हो रहा है उसको जॉब मिली है नहीं मिली राइट डी गेट अ जॉब ही डिट गेट अ जॉब वट्स हैपनिंग वट्स नॉट हैपनिंग वाई बिकॉज शेयरिंग प्रॉब्लम इज देयर वे ऑफ फीलिंग इक्वल सो वट इज द इस्लामिक स्टेटस ऑफ दिस दैट वी विल इन शाह बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ह्यूमन नेचर हियर सो दिस इज जस्ट हाउ इट इज फॉर वुमेन but there are certain things women have been stopped from you can't talk about this you can't talk about this and we will discuss that inshallah in in the proper time uh okay a man does all the talking at meetings so we're talking about who talks more a man does all the talking at meetings and says to his wife she's the talker in our family You get it? He's doing the. They're sitting together, and he's doing all the talking. And he says, "She's the one who does most of the talking in our family." But he's really referring to the private situation. In fact, she's the talker when they're home, and he's the talker when they're at the meeting. So for her, for her talk comes into its own when you're one on one with someone you feel close to, and that's why again women are choosy on who they choose as their friends. and this is why uh when we were talking about the mother in law and the daughter in law or when we were talking about one woman to another woman or when we were talking it, it they they form friendships on this kind of ambiguous idea of we're equal or we share something uh there's been a lot of research on this I'll just share one with you that uh may make sense or may not make sense one thing they found in little girls when they're playing like if one little girl says oh my mommy has eye glasses the other one will immediately immediately say my mommy has glasses too right uh whereas boys will be more kind of like uh who is up and high so for example if a boy says i can kick the ball this this far the other boy will say well i can kick it farther than you so that's uh an example okay in fact there's one video clip where there what they basically did is they took natu- in natural settings of playground settings in school they just video recorded different people of different ages and analyzed their conversation so for example one conversation was you know boys again sitting perpendicular to each other not facing each other and one boy says i can kick the ball to the roof of the school and the next boy says well i can kick it to the sky and the next one after that says i can kick it to god right so meaning this is how guys are huh nine nine yeah the guys guys need guys are competitive again why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed men to be on the outside and women to be on the inside right you don't need competitive nature inside the house because that would only create conflict you need competitive nature outside the house uh, which would allow the whole society to benefit from that from that co- competition okay and so uh So uh so for her talk comes into its own when you're one on one with someone you feel close to for him talk comes onto its own when you're in a group where you have to make you have to make some contribution so you're in a group and you have to make some contribution it comes naturally then for her in the same way like when men are sitting together in their parties and they're talking with each other and just being without you know any effort for her she feels that way at all So that's an interesting like way to look at it. That's why it's very important that husbands spend time talking to their wives every day because that would help that relationship. Okay? And uh and it and it's the difference in conversational styles or rituals that creates the imbalance. So if women and men both were speaking up in private or both were speaking up in public, you wouldn't find the imbalance. But because in public in private there's an there's one and more on the public side one there's this imbalance now you ask me you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created hawa right to give company to adam right but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created women so different from men at the same time uh so it's very interesting the other thing that's very now interesting is uh so girls share Problems. share and then particularly higher level of closeness is when they share problems okay. for guys it's to it's to be able to make fun of your friend because 
how do you invade your friend's space? Generally, guys like to, you know, you don't, you don't cross your lines to me. I'll respect you if you respect me, right? This is how guys are. Don't, dis don't disrespect me, I won't disrespect you. If you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. If you're mean to me, I'll be mean to you, right? So how do guys go into the personal space of other guys? By joking with them. By joking about them. Or joking with each other. Because now you've mocked someone. The fact that no one else can joke about you to you. But the fact that I can means we've got, we're what? We're closer. The fact that I can mock you or make fun of you, or I can say, hey, you're wearing a funny hat, or something like that, which no one else could say, that means that I have, I've come to your inner space a little bit more. So guys get closer by what? Mocking each other, or ridiculing each other, or making fun of each other. Even, uh, even when, you know, many times, like the uncles, they'll make fun of the kids. Not because they're making fun of the kids, but it's actually their way of what? trying to gain that friendship. The little kid is actually seeing it as like, why is, he, why, who, why is he making fun of me? And they get the wrong message. So, uh, so as far as ritual opposition is concerned, so trouble talks is the ritual for women. Trouble talks is the ritual for women. Men have to cause trouble, you could say, making fun. Men cause trouble to show closeness. Right? Throw some... To do some, even like do a prank on someone. You know, the fact you can do a prank on someone or make fun of them shows that men are closer. So, it's very typical for boys to play fight. Little girls will fight, but only when they're angry. Guys will fight just in an argument, just to fight for the sake of fighting, right? Just, just to go through this process. And then guys want, they, they fight, women fight because they're angry at each other and there's a real conflict. And so what happens is, these, uh, this men use mock aggression and ritualized opposition in situations that women do not. So for example, another thing would be just arguing for the sake of arguing. Because guys like arguing, and not just arguing for the sake of arguing, even arguing, but then what? That same type of argument that men are okay with, women are not okay with. They would never have, uh, let's say, a difference of opinion type of argument amongst each other. One of the women will just be, just tend to go quiet. There would be no possibility of having what? Further conflict. But guys are willing to have further conflict. And it's actually a sign of what? Friendship. It's a sign of making friendship. And so, so this tells you something, that, for example, about our ulama. The fact that they're not willing to even argue shows that they're not even, they, they, they don't even, they're not even willing to come close. Right? Because the fact that you're willing to argue with someone, even if you have a difference of opinion, shows that there's somewhat closeness for men. So, for men, teasing and verbal, uh, kind of like debate or kind of mock aggression that creates connection. And that, that creates friendship and then you come to, at the end you both come to some common conclusion or you continue to disagree. But this is also, very interestingly enough, a way of what? Because we use words to, put, uh, to, to, to tease, or we use words to disagree, but also this disagreement particularly creates what? Further ideas. It helps guys in creating ideas. Something that women are not very accustomed to. Something that women are not very accustomed to. So, which was, uh, so because women don't tend to use ritual aggression in this way, they often interpret the gesture, this arguing with one another as a negative thing. So it's sometimes like the husband wants to argue with his wife like the way he argues with his friends, but the wife will be completely turned off. She doesn't want to have, because she sees that as, she sees that as aggression. Whereas a guy, if I can uh, argue with, uh, with you uh, about some issue and we can disagree and we're fine and next week we'll be back here again, no difference. But if, if it's some sister, for example, and we're disagreeing, and she disagrees with me, she won't come back next week. Because it's, it's aggression to her. It's not a way of uh, coming up with ideas or, 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 or like even, it's, it has nothing to do with sharing, uh, uh, it has nothing to do with creating friendship. Whereas guys create aggression and conflict to create friendship. And in fact, you never know, and guys have no other way of knowing 
if somebody else is their friend other than the fact that A, guys tend to do everything with other guys. That's one way. The other is that I can, I can criticize him without him going nuts on me is that he respects me and I'm his friend. So, then, uh, so we were talking about communication. So here is uh, how s some other aspects of the conversation. How much time do we have? 20, 20 minutes? It's all focused on talk because for many women, talk is the glue that holds a relationship together. And he feels, I tell you, and, she, and he feels, I tell you everything. And she says, you don't tell me anything. Again, you don't tell me anything. You don't do anything for me, right? He says, I tell you everything. She says, you don't tell me anything. It's a different definition of what, what's anyone telling. I mean, they, their understanding of what is being communicated is different. She wants him to tell him all his problems. And he is talking to her about all the, you can say, goal-oriented things. Well, I paid these bills, or I went there, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I fixed the, uh, the sink, or I fixed, you know, the, the, I did this and that. The guys are talking about what they did and what they accomplished. Girls want to hear about problems. To make matters worse, the very kind of talk she feels would create connection telling troubles is the kind of talk that he feels would put him one down showing his weakness which is something a guy would never want to do in front of his wife another very common uh, theme amongst women and this is also very interesting is that she nags me you know she tells me to do something and then five later five minutes later she says it again five minutes later she says it again so on and so forth here again, men's focus on status holds, it's the up-down, it's the, right? And so this is what happens. Here again, man's focus on status holds a key. From this perspective, a person, a person who tells another what to do is the boss. And in, in his mind, she's not the boss, okay? Putting the other in the one-down position, that is why it is important to many men to feel that they're doing things out of their free will. So in order to do that out of their free will, so she says, vacuum the house. So now, he's, now she told her, so he has to convince himself. This is my, I also agree, I should do this. He goes through a mental process where he says to himself, I also agree that I should do this. So now he's th convincing himself of this, but before he comes to the end of convincing this, she says it again. So now he has to start over again. So what happens? She asks him to do something. Well, he's going to do it. He's just going to wait a little while. So she thinks. Now he's going through the mental process of saying to himself, I, I do need to do this because it's my decision to do this, not because somebody asked me to do this. So she thinks, I guess he didn't realize I really wanted him to do it, so I'll tell him again. Well, each time she tells him again, he becomes more de determined to wait a bit longer to prove he's not doing it because he he's not he's doing it because he wants to, not because she told him to. And so she ends up being a nag in response to his reaction to being told what to do. So these are different interpretations of what it means to be told to do what. So this is very important, especially for mothers and young kids that are boys. <clears throat> if a mother says to a boy, clean your room, he's a guy. He's going to take that, he needs that five minutes to think about, okay, I want to do this, not because somebody's forcing me. Right? But if the mother tells him again in the next two minutes, instead of five minutes, let's say, or, or, or just let him be at his own, then he's going to go through this problem too. So especially, it's, it's especially for the husband and the boys of the house, this, uh, the wives or the mothers, they need to be careful about this issue. Then, <coughs> uh, so here's, a, here's an example of uh, something... Um, <coughs> There was a woman hosting a radio talk show okay, in Washington, D.C. A man calls in and he says, My wife and I get along wonderfully. 
because we both agree there can only be one boss in the family and that's me. <coughs> well, the radio talk show host was a woman. And uh, that got her very uh, angry, what he said. Because what she wants, she wants him to accept that they're both equal. So uh, that, got, that got her and gave her a very impassioned, eloquent speech about how we're equals and nobody's boss. So she gave this whole talk that, you know, how could you say one's on top of the other and we're, you know, there's no boss, you're both equal. The next caller said, so now somebody else calls. So one person called and said, we, me and my wife, we agree, I'm the boss, you know, we're all good. So the host, hostess, is upset and she gives this speech about how he's wrong. Now another caller calls and he says, that's what's wrong with you women. You want to dominate us. You see how guys think in a higher, higher lower upper archy, right? Whereas she wants to look at this coming closer, coming farther. So he says, you want to dominate us. And the talk show host said, I think I'm going to scream. <laughs> and she did. She screamed on national, or she did. She screamed into the microphone. And uh, so that was a well-recorded uh, conversation. And uh, my wife and I believe only one person can be the boss, but her premises, we can be equal, nobody has to be the boss, is something guys simply cannot accept. It's not embedded in them to accept. They have to look at relationships in it. Relationships, they have to look at relationships as what? Upper and lower, upper and lower, upper and lower. They have to look at it like that. And so, to tell a guy, a guy can be politically correct in a university setting, or he can be politically correct on TV, me and my wife are both equal, and all of that. But in fact, if he's saying that, or uh, if she's uh, saying uh, the opposite also, what he, they're not telling the truth according to these studies. So, this is all I have to say for today. So, what are the lessons that men and women communicate differently? And the main lesson for men is that they should talk to their wives at home because it's, it has the same kick for them that it has for when men are talking with each other, when they're in their parties or in, you know, amongst themselves. It has the same kick for them, for them to talk to their husband. And also for the wives to realize that if the husband's not talking, it's probably because he has been talking, and now he just wants to relax. So both of those aspects are there.